Today we're going to talk about measuring V-belt pulleys and I've got a couple of stupid Fusion 360 tricks to show you. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. I got a comment from a viewer recently asking about how to measure a V-belt pulley groove, uh, specifically a pulley groove in the flywheel of an old reel-to-reel -reel tape deck that they were restoring. So today I thought we'd take a look at it because I think it's an interesting question and I'll show you how I measure V-belt pulleys and you know, dovetails and other angled surfaces in the shop and I'll show you a few of my favorite tricks for modeling them up in CAD and then producing drawings that are usable to actually machine replacement parts in the shop. Just for the purposes of this example, let's consider this pulley on my lathe. This is the largest pulley on the spindle, and this is a V-belt pulley. This lathe runs uh, type 3L belts, and we can look up the specs on those in a minute. But for now, let's just get some basic dimensions on this pulley. So the outside diameter we can measure is 138 millimeters. Um, I have uh, imperial micrometer, so let's just take the imperial measurement, 5.436 inches. And the width looks to be 627 thou which I know is about 16 millimeters. And then the other thing that I'd like to know is the depth of the groove. And my caliper doesn't have long enough jaws to measure across this directly. So we'll use the depth rod and just measure the depth like this. And that brings us to 361 thou. Now the other super important dimension on a pulley like this is the width of the groove, and of course the angle. We can look up the angle, uh, which incidentally does vary depending on the size of the pulley, or sheave as they're sometimes called, and the reason for that is because of the way the belt works. The belt has fiber reinforcing, at least this belt does, in the outside edge, so as the belt bends, the outside edge stays the same length, but the inside edge, of course, has to get shorter as the belt bends into a tighter and tighter radius, and that compresses the material at the center of the belt, and causes it to spread out wider. So you actually, the smaller the pulley is, the shallower the V angle has to be to accommodate that. Otherwise, if they were all 40 degrees, which is the standard for this size, uh, for this uh, type of pulley, um, then as you got smaller and smaller, the belt would ride only on this inside edge because it was too wide. So you actually have to change the angle depending on the diameter. And we can go look that up in the book. But in terms of actually measuring the width of this, we need a way to gauge those inside surfaces. And the easiest way to do that is the same way you would gauge threads when you're cutting them on a lathe, and that's with pins. Now, I don't have thread wires that are large enough for this, so let me go to my gauge pin set and pick out a couple that look like they're about the right size, meaning they fit about halfway down the flank. I've got a gauge pin set here. This is a 251 to 500 thou set, so a quarter to half inch. And let me just pick a couple of pins that look like they're about the right size for this pulley. I'm gonna grab a 295 and a 296. Now, of course, since I don't have a complete, uh, two complete sets of gauge pins, these are different sizes, 295 and 296, but it doesn't matter we'll compensate for that in the modeling later. So let me just lay one in the top, and it will just sit there, and I'll hold one in the bottom, and we'll measure across it with a micrometer. Now I'm a little bit blind, so I kind of have to do this by feel, because I can't see what's happening on the bottom at the same time I'm working on the top here. Just try to make sure it's leveled and bottomed. I'm just trying to feel and find the tight spot, and that appears to be it. And we are at five inches, 555 and a half thousandths. Okay, that's pretty convenient. Okay, so I think we have all the dimensions we need. I'm not gonna bother about the internals on this pulley because you would design that specific for whatever application you're using it for. 
but uh, we've got our measurements. Let's go in and uh, model this thing up. This is Fusion 360. Let's start out by just taking the dimensions that we measured out in the shop and creating a drawing of the pulley. And I'll start with a sketch and then we'll revolve it. Let's pick a plane here, put the sketch on this plane. I'm gonna hit L for line and I'm going to hit X for construction line and I'm just gonna draw a vertical line here to use for construction. Now hit X again to turn that off and now we'll draw one quarter of the pulley. So I'll just draw this across, up, over, down at an angle, and then into the center line. Now to turn this into the full shape of the pulley, I'll just use the mirror tool here and we'll mirror all of these lines we just drew and we'll mirror those around this dotted center line that we drew. And now I wanna have the full pulley because I need to show the dimensions all the way to the top and bottom. So I'll select mirror again, and I will mirror all of these lines up here. And I will mirror those around this horizontal baseline. So that gives us the cross section of the entire pulley. And when it's time to actually make the pulley, we can just select half of it and revolve it around this baseline. Now let's put in the dimensions that we know. So I'll hit D for dimension, and I know that we have the outside diameter, and that's 5.436. And we have the width, which is 0.627. And you can see we've already uh, moved this around. Let me move this in so it makes a little bit more sense. Let's go ahead and put the angle on this. D for dimension again, click these two. And what is the correct angle for this pulley? Well, we can look at the uh, machinery's handbook and I've got the section here for three L pulleys and for effective outside diameter over 4.2 inches, which is what we have, the groove angle should be 38 degrees. So I can come back here and put this in as 38 degrees. Great, and we also know the depth if I click here and click here, draw this over, we know the depth is uh, 361. And now we have everything except for the width of the groove. If I grab this, I can move this in and out. And the measurement we're gonna use to determine this is the measurement we took across pins. So let's go ahead and draw the pins. So I'll go over here to create circle and I wanna pick a two tangent circle. So I'll check that line and this line, and then we'll pull this up and just click the circle in there. And we'll do exactly the same thing down here at the bottom. Because we use two different diameters of pins, we can't mirror this. Hit D for dimension, and I know one of these was uh, 295, and the other one was 296. Now that uh, still doesn't give us that dimension because as we move, oops, escape, as we move this in and out, you can see that changes the width. So we have to control that dimension and we measured across the pulleys and it was 5.5555 inches. So we need to put a dimension across the outside of those pins. So I'll hit D for dimension and let me hit escape so nothing's selected. Hit D for dimension. I'll, I will highlight the circle, but I'm not gonna click yet. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say pick circle slash arc tangent, and then I will pick a point up here. It doesn't matter exactly where, I just need it near the top. And then I will go down here to the bottom to pick the second point, and I will right click on this circle. Pick circle arc tangent is already, the, is already selected, and so then I can just click here, and it will give me a tangent line, and I can put in my dimension. 5.5555. You can see that has now shifted. The entire sketch is now black, meaning that everything is fixed. We can finish the sketch and then we can revolve it. Just choose this, choose the revolve tool, select this horizontal line in the center here as an axis, and we have our pulley. Now we could have drawn in all the other dimensions like the bore, or we can just right click here and uh, say create sketch and we can you know, put a sketch on the side, 
of this and use that to extrude a hole through it or you know whatever other geometry we want on the pulley we can add that after the fact or we could have incorporated that into the original sketch so this is how you make an accurate model of something with angled sides like this you can do the same thing by wedging a couple of pins into a dovetail and measuring the distance between them and then using the same tangent measurement and drawing your two pins with different diameters that works for dovetails and really any case where you've got a v-shaped groove you can put a pin into it and then take a tangent measurement across those pins or between those pins to control that dimension but what if we want to go the other way? What if we want to take the dimensions from the book, draw up a pulley, and then use the pin measurements to actually machine it in the shop? Well, we can do that too. Let me start a new design, and we will do exactly the same thing. We'll create a sketch, pick a plane here, line. Now in this case, I haven't drawn that vertical line yet, so I have no way to snap to the center. So I'll just come down here, touch that. And now when I pull up, it gives me a guide to snap to, and then that will then close it. And then I can go ahead and just select the center line and hit X to make that a construction line. And then we'll do the same mirror. And you can see I've actually got a little error down here in the center. Um, apparently, when I drew this originally, I drew this as two segments. I think the mouse button is failing, so it came across and registered a click here. I won't worry about it. I'll just go ahead and close this line. Okay, and now to dimension this pulley, let's just take the dimensions from the book. So if we go look at this, um, let's just pick an outside diameter, let's say six inches. So D for dimension. So we want to make a six inch pulley. And we know that the width on the top of the pulley, if it's 3L over 4.2 inches, we know the width is 0.372. So we can just dimension that directly. We know that the angle of this groove is 38 degrees. And we can find the depth. Let's see, the depth here would be D, and D is 0 0.406. And then we can just pick any width we want for this. Doesn't matter, let's just make it a half inch. Okay, now we've got the same thing here, and we've got this two dimensions based on the book, and we can just revolve that around this axis, and now we have a pulley. But what we need to do is create a shop drawing that will then give us the ability to uh, measure this groove as we're making it in the shop. Now we could try in the shop to take this dimension across the top edge, or maybe the dimension across the bottom edge and measure that. But since we don't have right angles, we don't have a really good way to measure it in the shop, like when it's on the lathe. So why don't we just use the same trick and draw in some pins. So I will put in two circles here and I'm going to say create circle tangent and we'll just do exactly the same thing we did before. We'll dimension these, we'll use the same diameter pins. We wouldn't have to, we could use any diameter of pins that actually fit in the flat and make measuring practical, but for convenience, I'll pick the same ones, 295, 296, and now I'll take my dimension, right click, pick circle arc tangent, pull this out, and now it's going to say adding this dimension will over constrain, click OK to create a driven dimension. So I'll create a driven dimension, and I can see that that dimension is 6.123 inches. So when I am out in the shop, I will want to machine these grooves until the distance across those two pins is 6.123. But of course, that's not very convenient if I have to write that down. So let's go ahead and save this and make a drawing from it. New drawing from design. I'm not gonna worry about the page size. This is just a demonstration. And let's do this one-to-one. -one. Okay. Let me come over here and create a projected view of the pulley. 
So now we have our pulley and we can come in here and we can put in some dimensions. So the diameter of the outside here, the diameter of the inside, we can you know, put that dimension over here if it makes us happy. Let me change, go up here to document settings and make these a little bit more convenient. Linear dimension precision. I want three digits and I want to display the trailing zeros. Okay, great. So now we can come in here again, D for dimension. We can put in our angle so that we have that. But what I'd really like to be able to do is see those pins. So if we come over here to the browser, I can come down to sketches, turn on sketches and turn on this sketch. And now we have a line in here and we can use that, or we have the circle, it's now visible and we can put a dimension across it. So I'll come in here, we'll select dimension again and right click and we have a different set of options here and I can pick quadrant and that will allow me to then pick the points on the four compass directions of this pin. So I can pick the top there and then we can come down to this one and right click again, say quadrant. I can pick that same location, pull this over and now we have a dimension. There's our 6.123 inches across the outside of the pins. And now this is in the shop drawing. We can add all the other dimensions that we need uh, in order to actually machine this. There's the width of the pulley, for example. We can finish this drawing, get everything that we need to actually machine the part in the shop. And now we have a reference dimension for the measure across those pins. Of course, we should put in the dimension of the pins. And we could always put in little call outs just to explain what that is, that that's a pin that's not part of the part to be machined. So using pins like this is really one of my favorite tricks. And because you can put it in the, in the CAD software, you can use constructive geometry rather than math to try to figure this out. I mean, you could do all the math for these angles, but because in the CAD software, I can just drop it in say, yeah, make me a circle, make it tangent, make it this big, and then take a direct measurement off of it. The CAD package does all the math and makes this kind of stuff easy and makes it easy to produce a drawing that then makes it easy to work in the shop. So you can use the same technique for machining a dovetail or machining a V-belt pulley that you would if you were uh, machining uh, threads using thread wires. So. Well, that's all I've got for you today. It's just a quick little tip that I know makes my life easier and hopefully now it will make your life easier. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. Tell me about your favorite tricks and tips for measurement in the shop or, or using CAD and constructive geometry. I'd like to hear them. Maybe I'll learn something out of this too. Thank you for watching.